Welcome to the video folks. Apologies for the lack of uploads. The weather has been absolutely abysmal over the last three or four months, whether it's wind, rain, frost, or a combination of all three on the same day or the same week. So I thought I'd better get back into the swing of thing. January's nearly done. So a couple of things I'm gonna go through uh, in this video. First being the cavity tray cleaner from the guys at Williams. I reached out to them, I've seen their products, so checked out their website, reached out to Williams and uh, they kindly sent me uh, the cavity tray cleaner. So it comes in plastic sections, uh, you link them together, you pop them into your cavity, one end has like a stop end on it and the other end has a rope, uh, you can pop it in across your trays, uh, catch your mortar debris and at the end of the shift or whenever required, pull it out chuck it into your skip and say you're trying to clean the trays retrospectively. I think it's going to be incredibly good if you've got a gas barrier around the bottom of a plot, gable ends when you've got the tray at the gable end, um, or you have trays around say concrete, uh, precast concrete slabs. So just need to get some work done so I can give it a bit of a, a review. So that'll be coming in a couple of weeks, hopefully. So one thing I did want to touch on, which is a bit of a bugbearer of mine, frequently get pulled on it, don't matter how many times I try and reinforce it into everyone. Uh, so I thought I'd do a little diagram on whiteboard. Internal lintels and lintels to the external skin, NHBT state where possible should be placed on a full block. So I still see to this day, despite our quality control procedures, my brickwork minimum standard guide, uh, people getting the coursing wrong and blocks ending up on halves or three quarters. We then spot it, we then have to change it. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money. It causes disruption to programs and pre-plasters and it's pretty basic to get right. So I'm gonna run through with you guys how to set your coursing out from the off to make sure your lintel lands on a full block. So we'll go over to the whiteboard now. So this is gonna be an example of an internal load bearing block work wall, which is by far the most common occurrence we see in our business of people getting it wrong. So this is a typical example of an internal block work wall. So this is your doorway, hopefully that's clear. This is your lintel, obviously your block work, your block work, and then this demonstrates the outside skin or the perimeter of your building. So uh, for this particular example, lintel height is on nine courses of blocks so two meters and 25. some people do put them on at 2.1 but if you put them on at 2.1 by the time you've got your door frame in you end up with a piece of timber across the lintel head and there's really no need for it so most of our clients now insist on us installing the internal lintels uh, two meters and 25 which does actually work um, you just need to be a little bit cautious uh, and that you don't decrease that height at all, otherwise the door won't go in. So, like I said, two meters and 25. So, this represents your block work, this is your internal door, and this is your 75 mil typical box lintel at the top here, and then this is your number of coursing. So, very simply, what normally happens when you're setting out is you'll put a wall tie, you'll build the outside skin, you'll put a wall tie in, uh, you build all the outside, you'll get it up six or seven courses, and then you'll start setting out. And then typically what happens, people will mark this wall, and maybe mark this wall, put a line across, they'll run from the outside skin to the door reveal, and they'll do the same from this skin, and they'll run to the door reveal, typically putting your cuts next to the door. So NHBC state, where possible, they would like load bearing lintels to be on full blocks. Now, this example is 440 blocks. Uh, I know some places use 620s, but it still works. The principle's still the same. So all you need to do is position your door, mark it on your wall, and you need to work back from the door reveal and put your cut in here. I know for this example, but this all works, oh, it's really nice, works blocks, you know, perfect. We all know in reality that isn't gonna happen. So, but all you need to remember is start with a full block on either side of the door. And as you can see, you will end up with a full block for your bearing height of your lintel. 
So if this doesn't work full blocks back into your external skin, all that would happen would be if this was your last full block, you just end up with your cut here. That's all that would happen. And you just keep chasing your cut into this external skin, just like you would always chase your cut into your door reveal. So with a little bit of thought and a little bit of effort, all you really need to do is remember to start with a full block, either side of the door opening, and it will always work, full blocks, to the underside of the lintel. Bearing in mind that this is working on nine quarters of blocks uh, and two meters and 25. Some people may insist on a door opening of 2.1, which is just a briquette, but it will, it will still work. So all you need to do is introduce your briquette um, underneath here and then you can go on top and put your full block on top of the briquette and you'll still end up with a full block. Most internal doors are similar sizes. There's not a, mil there's not a, a, you know, a million miles between each one. It might be 90 mil, 100 mil. So it will still work. All you need to remember is start with a full block either side. Now I know you may have a door here, it happens. So you may have this wall, a door, couple of block here and another door but NHBC do state where possible so I know people get their knickers in a twist and say well you know I can't do it there well NHBC do accept that it does say where possible and also you're going to have um, situations where you've got a significant amount of block work wall one side you've got a door and you've got a little nib and people seem to counteract my argument about full blocks with well that side sitting on a nib that's irrelevant. NHBC accept it, but where possible, they don't want to see it. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some people in the comments uh, arguing about my bond or block sizes or what if this happens or that happens. But please take it with a pinch of salt. It's where it's possible. You can't odds it if you can't physically fit them in. But the reason for it being on a full block is not necessarily the length of the block but it's the impact that it has on the structural integrity of the block when it's hit with a hammer and bolster so that is the reasoning behind NHBC's wanting to see full blocks so they're placed in position and they're not cut or compromised in any way shape or fashion so hopefully that will save me getting a lot of grief because despite me banging on about it, it still happens. Despite me issuing out emails and giving out free brickwork minimum standard guys, which are available to purchase from my store, by the way, people still get it wrong. Take a bit of time, think about your setting out, full block each side of the door, up you go, lintel works a treat. Next block comes along, two course of briquettes, gets you back coursing. So I'm also gonna quickly show you where to install your vertical damp on a bay window because that also confuses a lot of people. So let me clear this down, draw another diagram and I'll be back with you in a tick. Hopefully my diagram is clear enough for you guys. So this is another one, bay window or not even necessarily bay windows, vertical DPCs and people knowing where to position them. So this is a typical example of a bay window looking you know straight on at it whether it's a squint or whether it's a square return doesn't really matter the principle is still the same so this is your outside brickwork skin then you have your cavity and then you have your block work and i've even put some wall ties in so hopefully that's looking in this is the bay window itself looking into the living room or whatever area house it is so same this side so brickwork outer skin wall ties this is your cavity space and this is your block work. Sometimes this block work may be returned, sometimes it won't, sometimes there'll be cavity closure in here. Just depends on the house builder and what their specification is. So then typically you might have a, a GRP canopy or a lid of some description going on here. And typically that would maybe have a 450 upstand or a 225 upstand, whatever, whatever it may be, it varies from, from client to client. So what you eventually need to install is a vertical DPC across here which the lead will then come down and dress onto the upstand of the canopy preventing any downward water penetration 
into the living area below. And believe me, we've got these wrong. So I'm talking from experience. So your damp tray would be up here. This would be either raked out to receive lead um, or the preformed lead trays with the polystyrene and lead dressed into here. So then you have this void here. So typically what you can do is you can install block work in here, for example, because it won't be seen because it's behind the lead effectively. So you don't have to worry about that. So NHBC standards state that you should have a vertical DPC in here. So to stop sideward water penetration coming in here and entering the area below, you need to install a vertical DPC. So quite often I'm asked, what is the overhang of the GRP? What size is it? Is it got a straight edge on it? Has it got a decorative um, corner piece on? That's all irrelevant because the vertical DPC should always be installed at the same place. It doesn't matter if you've got a 450 overhang or whether you've got just a couple of hundred mil either side of your external brickwork. And the way to remember this, and this was actually pointed out to me by a site manager, Mark, if you watch it, thanks for this tip, is you have to always maintain the cavity. So the position of your vertical DPCs is in line with your brickwork on both sides. So when you think about it logically, the reason for this cavity is to protect Okay, it's for insulation to go in there, but it wasn't always for that. It's to protect the water coming across from this skin into this skin. So it makes sense that you would naturally maintain this cavity space down here. So this is the line of your vertical DPC. And you'll see this in, in some places, maybe sometimes when you've got a low level roof, which then bridges across and squares up the building you would always maintain this cavity until you bridge across. The bridging across of the cavity always comes on top of the tray. So if you think your vertical DPC goes in here, your vertical DPC goes in here, and then you have your lead tray across the top. And then in this area, you can fill this with blocks because it's not gonna be seen. And then in this area, you can do brickwork. So then you can see that this vertical DPC maintains that entire cavity all the way around. Nice and secure, no water penetration. So you've got to do a couple of little other details, but I won't confuse you with that because you should know these details when you've got to lap it round in like a C shape to prevent the water coming in. So that's a really good way of just remembering where you install this vertical DPC. So it's basically on the back of your face brickwork. Remember that, and then your vertical DPC will always be in the right place. And then you've got a completely um, protected unit. Sometimes you'll see, we use them sometimes, uh, you get these preformed plastic trays and they have like a um, an in and out for want of a better description so you can chase the brickwork in and out a lot of people ask me oh do I just put the tray on top of here and you know what if it's going to be outside of this GRP canopy so what you can do is cut this top bit off if you need to so basically you would cut that off and then it would meet here but what is important with this vertical DPC is that it continues in one piece and hits the underside of the vertical D of the horizontal DPC going across the top. And then you have a completely watertight, safe um, area that no water's gonna get in and piss your customers off like I've done in the past. So hopefully that has helped a few people. All right, folks, a little bit of a different twist on the video this week. Hopefully you found that interesting. And if you wanna see some more educational things, stick them in the comments below and I'll try and mix up the content a little bit uh, this year. It's my job to try and get the knowledge out of my brain and cascade that down to people in our business. And if everyone else can benefit from it at the same time, then all well and good because we all benefit from higher skilled people in the construction industry. So we've got a few things going on this year. I'll get the cavity cleaner out uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks. 
We've got Super Trail coming up this year. We've got some regional heats and might try and get to one of them and cover them. Uh, we've got the house build to catch up on. Uh, it's flying along. I've got the stairs in. It's plastered. Um, I haven't been there much recently, but I haven't need to be. It's ticking along nicely. Um, um, we've got a new site to start in, so I'd like to give you the tour of that. Um, and we've got a couple of other things in the pipeline as well. So that's it from me for this week. Uh, apologies again for the lack of content. Uh, but thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time out.